Hey, what's up guys, Sir Eminon here, and welcome to another episode of Inside DB Rated. This is the dual commentary series where we go ahead and spectate random matches on DB's ladder and just check out what people are playing. So this is going to be a match between Dark Sandwich on Burning Abyss versus Draco98 on Paleozoic Frogs. Uh, some throwback decks here, but as usual guys, if you do want to go ahead and submit replays for this series, feel free to check out my Discord server in the description box below. But let's get started with this video here without any further ado. So it does look like that Paleozoic Frogs did win the RPS, and they're going to choose to go first. And notably, this is a 60-card list, which I find to be pretty interesting. But the opening hand for Paleozoic Frogs going first is going to be Canadia, Olenoides, Buzzsaw Shark, uh, Absolute King, Backjack, and Swap Frog. So we see some cool text here. Uh, Buzzsaw Shark, if you all don't know, is basically a one-card Bahamut Shark into Toad. So you can target a water monster you control, special summon from your deck in defense position a fish monster with the same level as that monster, but with a different name. And if you do, it cannot activate its effects this turn. And also, you cannot special summon monsters for the extra deck, or from the extra deck for the rest of the turn, except Xyz monsters. Uh, it's a hard one to return, and also can be treated as a level 5 or a 3 monster if used for the Xyz summon of a water. So, this is obviously just a way to make Bahamut into Toad, as I just mentioned, which is pretty cool. But yeah, the rest of the hand looks pretty decent as well. Two Paleos and Swap Frog, pretty nice. Then the opening hand for BA going second is going to be Farfa, Seer, Imperm, Dark Ruler, and Book of Moon. So, we see some cool cards in here as well. Uh... Dark Ruler is one of the best going second cards, so choosing the main deck it, as well as some good utility cards. Uh, Imperm is an interesting hand trap this format. Not entirely sure if it's the best one, but I think hand traps are also kind of in a weird spot right now, uh, where they aren't necessarily the most effective, I feel. I think Board Breakers are actually better uh, for the first time in a while uh, against like some of the best combo decks, um, at least like in isolation, if you draw just one, right? But yeah, the hand was playable for sure. has two BAs. Uh, you could go for the, like, the Gravity Controller play with Dante and the EMZ. Uh, which works to make Beatrice. So we're going to see a normal summon Buzzsaw Shark, and then going to activate the effect that's going to target itself, and then summon a copy of Double Fin Shark. Uh, let's see. When this card is normal summon, you can target a level 3 or 4 water fish monster in your grave, uh, but special or special summon in defense position, but it has its effects negated, and you're locked into waters. So this is actually a way that you can recycle your Buzzsaw Shark and then go into another Bahamut. So I wonder how many Bahamuts they're playing. You'll really add a back off Toad effect in grave, for example. Uh, gonna go for Bahamut and then use the effect that's gonna detach but get impermed. And then they're going to use set two and pass. For two, we're gonna see a top deck graph. So this makes the hand a lot better because uh, now you have graph axis, which makes you um, makes it easier to go into Beatrice plays and stuff. So we're gonna see special summon Farfa and then going to normal summon graph. And then on that summon, they're gonna go Canadia. This is. Uh, BA's worst nightmare in terms of Book of Moon type effects, because not only does it cut off their access to Dante, but the Farfa also dies because it's uh, treated as a non-BA monster while set on the field. So we're just going to pass on this, choosing not to set Book of Moon. For turn, we're going to see a top deck Fury of Kariushin. So this card says, add a Torrential Tribute from deck to hand, and if a water monster you control will be destroyed by card effect, you can banish it from Grave instead. So this is a pretty pretty interesting card. We've seen this actually quite a bit in Paleo er, recently, um, so that's not too surprising. I'm going to go ahead and activate Bahamut Shark Effect since it did survive. That's going to summon out Toad from the extra. And then from here, you're going to activate the Fury of Kiryushin. That's going to search Torrential Tribute. And then they're going to normal summon the Swap Frog. And then use the effect to send a copy of Ronin Toten. And then just asking for Graf's Defense. Going into Marinsa Squirrel Anemone, which is definitely good because that brings back Swap Frog. We actually saw this in the uh, previous video with Marinsa. Uh, but yeah, Swap Frog is going to activate again. That's going to send a copy of Dupe. And then going to banish the dupe for Ronin Totem, and then make a, another copy of Toad. So two toads or two toads in one turn is not bad at all. Uh, gonna go ahead and attack with the Coral Anemone into the Graph, and then they're gonna activate Graph Effect, but they're gonna use Toad to negate it. Um, I think if you're gonna do that, it's probably worth uh, you know attacking with Toad first. That way, you just get a bit more damage in. Um, also, I think they just forgot to add back off the Toad here, which is unfortunate. I would have liked to see the recycle of the double fin shark. That would have been cool. Uh, but Toad's going to get in for 22. Up, oh, they said, forgot Toad effect. Out of it, can I fetch? Oh, shout out to the opponent for allowing it. So, yeah. I should also mention, uh, by the way, that both these players, I believe, are in the top 200 rated. Or, yeah, in terms of, like, rated players right now. Because uh, in, like, the mid-600s. So that's cool to see as well that these decks are up here. Oh, uh, yeah. Going to add back the double fin shark. So I hope we get to see that. Uh, they're going to set Torrential Tribute and then pass. For Tim, we can see a top deck tour guide. Uh, definitely good in combination with Dark Ruler. Uh, needed something, but they know about the Torrential, so curious as to how they're going to play out of this. Standby Fade Toad Effect is going to detach to summon out a copy of Deep Frog from deck. 
and then they're going to go to main phase one, uh, activate Dark Ruler, and then normal summon tour guide, and then use her effect. That's going to summon out a copy of the graph. And then on that summon, going to go ahead and activate Torrential. Going to wipe the opponent's board, but not theirs, because they can just banish the Fury to protect. And then graph effect, going to summon out Skarm from the main deck. And then going to special summon out Seer, and then overlay for a copy of the Dante. And then battle phase, they're going to attack into the Dupe Frog. So not choosing to detach. Uh, I guess they want to just make a Zeus here, actually. Yeah, you're gonna switch Dante to defense and then go for downer and then Zeus. Yeah, just get the extra material or yeah, extra like Zeus send basically. And then they're gonna detach two and then clear the field. Uh so the set card should also be sent, but yeah. Toad and Duke both trigger here, so Toad's gonna add back and Duke gets the search. So that might be the first time I've seen Duke Frog resolve outside of a battle phase, because I'm so used to this card missing timing. Uh but yeah, the last thing that happened was just it being sent to the grave, he has uses effect, so definitely works. Yeah, so gonna grab double swap frog in hand, which is very good follow up. So gonna set book of moon and then pass. Uh, end phase, Skarm activates to get another copy of tour guide. So we can see this build definitely is very heavily focused on just like making a lot of toads. Um, you know, and that makes a lot of sense because toad really does carry paleo a lot of the time. Whoa, that's a top deck. <laughs> that's gonna be waking the dragon for a turn. Uh, I did not expect that in the main deck here. That is fascinating for sure. Um, all right, fair enough. Uh, they're going to set the waking, which is actually going to be good against Zeus here, funnily enough. Uh, they're going to go ahead and pitch Swap Frog for the other Swap Frog, and then use the effects to send a copy of Ronin Totem to Grave, and then going to banish Swap Frog to bring out Ronin Totem. And then from here, they're going to Book and Moon the Swap Frog, and then they're going to banish the Dupe Frog for the other Ronin Totem. And then here, they're going to use the Zeus that's going to clear the board, but uh, going to fire off Waking the Dragon, and then Seer and Dante also trigger. So going to go ahead and summon back the Dante off the Seer. Dante adds back Farfa, and then Waking is going to summon a copy of Ultimate Falcon. Pretty interesting target. So I guess it makes sense, because if you bring it like Last Warrior or Exterior, they don't actually clear the, or the Zeus. So I just want something that's big. Uh, going to enter Battle Phase and attack over the Zeus. Main Phase 2, going to Normal Summon Backjack, because yeah, that was all done off the back of Special Summon Swap Frog. And then they're going to Link for Link Tree, though. And then backtrack effect is going to allow them to look at the top three. It's Trap Check, Lost Wind, Swap Frog. And then they get to stack their deck. So they're going to put... Actually, let's see what was put on the top. It was Trap Trick. So Trap Trick's on top. And then Swap Frog. And then Lost Wind. So they're going to pass on this. For turn, we can see the top deck Dark Ruler. Uh, not going to be that helpful here. Uh, they're going to activate it, though, anyways. Pretty interesting. Uh, maybe they just didn't read the Ultimate Falcon. <laughs> So they're going to go ahead and normal summon tour guide, use the effect, that's going to summon out a copy of graph from deck. And then thinking of resolution, chooses not to use backjack here. So they're going to link off for Cherubini, and then graph triggers, that's going to summon out a copy of Seer. And then Cherubini is going to mill a copy of Skarm. Uh, we didn't see what was targeted, but um, maybe it will be linked off later. Uh, going to go ahead and link summon for a copy of Mascarena. And then Dante uh, and Seer both trigger, so that's going to add back Seer, special back Dante. And then going to link for a copy of Nightmare Unicorn. Uh, Unicorn effect and Dante effect. So that's going to de er, discard to try and target the Ultimate Falcon. Probably thinking it's negated off of the Dark Ruler, but it's also unaffected by Dark Ruler. And then Dante add back Farfa. Um, wait, didn't they... Did they pitch the Farfa for this... Uh, what's it called? For the Unicorn? Hang on a second. Yeah, so they, they pitched Farfa, but Dante targets. Um, yeah, you targeted BA, and it wasn't in Grave at the time it hit the Grave, so there should be a different BA added back here. But yeah, it's unaffected by Dark really anyways, so that was a uh, pretty unproductive Unicorn. <laughs> but uh, Axis Code is going to hit the board. That's going to gain three counters on Summon, or gain 3,000 attack on Summon. It doesn't gain counters technically, but uh, gains 3,000 attack. And then here is where they're going to use Batjack at the start of the battle phase. So that's going to reveal a trap trick, and then they're going to activate the trap trick, chain of Linoides. Also, excuse the heater in the background. Um, but they're going to go for Ice Dragon's Prison off the trap trick. So that is going to target IP, and that's going to be the end of game one. Yeah, because it was Cyrus's. So going to IP, uh, I guess Boros Ode is another out, and I doubt that they play Dragons. So um, probably not like really thinking about the backjack and what it could fetch, but I mean, that also is kind of up to chance. Uh, but that being said, of course, you know, uh, they had it, and Trap Trick is one of the best cards in that deck for sure. 
So Paleo taking game number one here, and now we're going to move on into game number two. Looks like Paleo is going to be forced to go first here, which is pretty interesting. But if you guys are enjoying this video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new here and want some more commentary similar to this. But the opening hand for Paleo going first again is going to be Olenoides, Lost Wind, Trap Trick, Rise to Full Height, and Paleo's Oid Dynamiscus. Alright, I'm going to have to read this card because I have no clue what this does. Uh, it says, target one face at monster on the field, double its defense, but its defense becomes zero at the end of the turn. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one monster you control. Your opponent's monsters cannot attack for the rest of this turn except to attack that monster. You only activate one per turn. Okay. I don't assume that the field effect comes up a lot, but the grave effect is interesting, because I guess it kind of creates a lock with Dupe Frog, if I'm thinking about this interaction correctly. It's like you have Dupe Frog on the field, and like say you target a Toad with this, um, then your opponent basically just can't attack, because they're locking each other, similar to like the Dupe Lock. So if that's what this is there for, that's kind of interesting, but I've never seen this card in my life. Uh, so that's very fascinating for sure. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments what you guys think about this card and if there's other uh, uses that I'm not thinking about. But uh, it's Paleo, it has five traps, and they're going first. And then the opening hand for BA going second is going to be Cosmic, Farfa, Skarm, Graph, and then Libic. So no things like Lightning Storm or you know, Harpy's Feather Duster, none of the big blowout cards. Um, but has a lot of BAs, some of the good ones is that and has Cosmic to just interrupt Paleo Chains, which is like really, really good. So they're going to go ahead and set four and then pass. For turn, we're going to see another copy of Cosmic Cyclone. I do wonder if they're going to blind hit. Um, they might be fearful of another Waking the Dragon because now they see it in the main deck. Um, so it's probably going to be kept in post side as well. Um, so they're going to start with a copy of Libic Special Summoned and then Normal Summon a copy of Draft. And then they're going to, on that summon, use Dynamiscus. Uh, yeah, they're going to pitch the Rise of Height and they didn't set it. So clearly it's not there for the on-field effect. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, going to be pitched there, and then Graph gets banished. So they're going to special summon out Farfa next, and then go for a copy of Dante. And then they're going to activate Dante Effect, milling three, detaching Libic. That is a rough one, milling the Feather Duster. Would have liked to have had that. But Seer going to bring back the Barbar, -bar, and then get in for 17, and then 25. Uh, going to be thinking of the Dante attack. That's going to go three, though. And then main phase two, going to make a copy of Beatrice by pitching Skarm, and then the Barbar dies because it's not a BA monster. Or the Beatrice isn't a BA. And then end phase, Skarm, I'm going to grab a copy of Tour Guide. And then on resolution, it looks like Oronoi is going to be activated. So it's going to target their own set. They're going to chain Cosmic, targeting the Olenoides. So this is good because it cuts off the Dynamiscus chain. And it also gets this from, it prevents that from hitting the graveyard. So definitely pretty solid. But they're going to chain Trap Trick, of course, because that was their intention. Um, it, I mean, they were going to get the Dynamiscus out anyways. Um, so I don't know. Maybe maybe it wasn't worth it. Uh, granted, of course, they didn't know necessarily it was Trap Trick. But, I mean, it was clear they were going to chain it, right, if they were targeting it, I feel. Because um, I don't think getting one single Paleo is worth it. Um, and you could actually possibly read the fact that this is a Trap Trick. Because if it's any other trap that can't be, like, immediately activated, um, or that doesn't, like, get you more value than you still only get one Paleo name on board. Whereas like Trap Trick obviously lets you get the first Dynamiscus on field. And then when this goes to Grave, ideally, if not for the Cosmic, then whatever you set off Trap Trick could just be like a chainable and then you would just get the Illinois on field. So I guess you could actually make a reasonable assumption that this is Trap Trick and then just hold the Cosmic. Um, yeah, because like if you Cosmic... Yeah, because this would be a good time to Cosmic here, I think. Yeah, because you're going to activate Morella, and then you can Cosmic and then target the set because they can't chain it due to Trap Trick. Yeah, I think that's good. Oh, wait, they're targeting Morella, I think? Unless if I didn't see that correctly. Oh, so they are targeting Morella. Interesting. Uh, I guess they really just want to prevent Paleos from hitting the Grave, which is fair. I mean, there wasn't going to be a Paleo in Grave no matter what, so I really do think that hitting the set there would have been fine. Um, again, maybe they are really fearing Waking the Dragon. <laughs> you never know. But they're going to pass. Oh, that's a very sick top deck. It's going to be Swap Frog. So that is going to be Normal Summoned. And then that effect is going to send a copy of Ronin. And then it looks like Beatrice is going to activate. That's going to detach Farfa. And then they're going to chain Lost Wind to negate the Beatrice. And then chain a copy of Leoncolia. Yeah, so Toad's going to hit the board no matter what. Uh, Farfa going to go and banish the Swap Frog. And then they're going to overlay for a copy of... Oh, looks like they're going for Obabinia. Cool. So Obabinia effect is going to grab a search for another Leoncolia. All right, so they're playing multiples. I guess with Trap Trick, it's reasonable. Uh, they're going to go ahead and activate it. That's going to put back a Banished. Uh, put him at the swap, in fact. And then going to... 
bring back the Dynamiscus. Uh, yeah, this puts food for Ronin Toad in. So the Farfetch actually ended up uh, not being too terrible in this case. Uh, again, a banner swap for Ronin. And then they can overlay for Toad. And then Battle Fade is going to attack into Beatrice. Yeah, they're going to go for Zeus here. Uh, Beatrice to Dante. Only attack. Um, not really sure what they meant by that, but uh, anyways, I'm uh, going to go for Downward and then Zeus. Um, and then they're going to go Zeus effect. That's going to clear the Beatrice. And this is unaffected by monster effects. Uh, also your own monster effects too. So that's pretty nice. I'm going to go ahead and activate Dante to add back Barbar. -Bar. And then they are just going to pass. So valuing the Zeus over the Toad, which is pretty interesting. I mean, they will get the Toad add back as well eventually. So they draw Farfir for turn. Then they're going to go rise to full height and draw phase. Going to target Zeus, so it can't be attacked. Or it has to be the one attacked, rather. So they can't attack over the Obabinia. So that's pretty nice. Uh, they're going to go ahead and special summon out Barbar. -Bar, and then special summon out a copy of Farfa. And then going to be using Zeus here. That's going to detach. And then Toad Effect to add back Ronin Totem. Um, we knew about Skarm, right? Or we knew about Tour Guy because of Skarm. I'm just going to make sure... Uh, Skarm is fine. That was 23 minutes. I, I, sorry, I just want to make sure. Yeah, that was the last turn, right? Yeah, that was the last turn. So they know about the tour guide. All right, just making sure. Uh, so again, normal summon tour guide and go for a copy of Graf. And then they're going to link summon for a copy of Cherubini. And then Graf effect is going to summon out Skarm from deck. And then Lost Wind is going to trigger here. Um, yeah, that's going to be Chilling 2 Lost Wind. Chilling 1 Graf. Jabini going to go ahead and send Seer, and then Seer bring back Dante, and then they're going to go for Nightmare Phoenix. Dante going to add back the Seer, and then they're going to go for Axis Code. Axis Code going to gain 2,000 on Summon, and then going to banish Phoenix to pop the Zeus. And then they're going to go Battle Phase, going to try attacking the Obabinia, but the Rise of Full Height, you can only attack the uh, the Zeus, which is no longer on board, but I assume that still applies, because you can't attack, uh, except to attack that monster. And if it's on field, then they just can't attack. Yeah, main phase two, they're going to go ahead and banish the Cherubini to get rid of the Lost Wind. And then end phase, going to go and use Skarm Effect. That's going to search out a copy of Calcab. So not getting Tour Guide there. I wonder if they're only playing one Tour Guide. Which, honestly, I don't think is the worst, as, as weird as it is to say, because this card, turn one, is just not the greatest, because uh, it loses to any, any interruption. Like, if you're going first or second. Uh, it's so vulnerable, but it's a great push. So you wonder if they are only playing one, or if they just actually want to search Cal Cub. So for turn we're gonna see a top deck to Solemn Judgment. That is gonna be pretty good at the end of this turn, because both the cards in hand are known. Uh so you're being added back off Dante. And then yeah, so no fear of hand traps. So Obabin you're gonna detach the Leoncolia, and that's going to search for gonna be thinking here. Another copy of Leoncolia, so wait. Yeah, three copies of Leoncolia. Coelia, or, I always say Leoncolia because I can't say Leoncolia very well, uh, even though I know there's an I up here. Um, but yeah, it's Leoncolia, but I always just say Leoncolia because it's easier. <laughs> um, anyways, that's a side tangent. I'm going to go ahead and activate the Leoncolia. That's going to trigger the Dynamiscus as well. Then they're going to put back Engrave the Spot Frog. And then they're going to Normal Summon Ronin and then link for a copy of the Coral Anemone. And then bring back Spot Frog. These are some really cool plays here. Swap Frog Effect is going to send another Frog to deck. The pick is going to be Dupe. And then they're going to run and Banish the Dupe, Summon itself. And then overlay all of those for Anomalo Akaris. Cool. So this is like the Dryden, basically, um, which is cool. And it also allows you to uh, get more resources. If a Trap card is sent from your spell, trap sent to the grave. Uh, if, you have, if, you excavate a top, or if you excavate the top card of your deck and it's a trap, you get to set it to your, or add it to your hand. And then uh, otherwise you send it to the grave. I thought it sent it to your field for some reason. But yeah, it adds it to your hand. But yeah, uh, Anomalo Karis is going to clear the access code and then go into battle phase, going to attack for 2k and then 24. So, fair amount of damage. And then they're going to set Solemn Judgment and then pass. So they have a pop and a Judgment. Going to be pretty hard to beat. Uh, they're going to go ahead and special summon out Libic. And then they're going to normal summon the Seer. And then going to let that actually go through. Going to summon out Dante. And then they're going to Judgment the Summon of Dante. So they're going to go... Chain Link 1, Seer, Chain Link 2, Dante, I would assume, because this was special summoned, right? 
Uh, Nama Car is going to be chilling three. That's going to reveal Canadia and then add to hand. And then going to add back Barbar off Dante and then Seer bring back Graf. And then add a Canadia. Uh, why did you add it? Anomal Karis, yeah. And then going to go ahead and special summon out Calcab. And then go for Dante. Uh, was I not supposed to judgment the Dante? Let's see. <laughs> yeah, because uh, Dante does get its effect when it's striked or judgmented or warninged. Um, it also gets its effect if uh, it gets sent off of things like Nadir's, or Nadir's Servant um, or Maximus. Um, yeah, things like that. Just if it's sent to the graveyard by any means. We are going to go for another Dante and then going to detach three. I think this is the third Dante. Yeah, so they are on three. Uh, they are going to attack into the Anemone and then going to Anomal Karis to pop it. And then Graf and Dante both going to trigger. So they're going to put back a Dante and then summon out Seer. And then main phase two, special summon out Barbar and then go for Dante number three and then go for Zeus. But uh, the Dante never actually battled because it got popped. Yeah, so I'm going to put those back. They could go and use Dante again. So that's going to detach and mill three. Um, I don't really think there's a good way for BA to come out of this game. Yeah, it's going to pass. Uh, for turn, we're going to see a top deck backjack. So pretty decent. So they're going to go ahead and be thinking here. Gonna activate Coral Anemone, that's gonna bring back Swap Frog, and then Swap Frog Effect is going to send a copy of the Dupe Frog. Then they're going to banish for a copy of Ronin Totem, and then overlay for the Totally Awesome, and then gonna go ahead and set two, and then pass. For two, we're gonna say Top Deck Desires, which is, it would be good if not for like the Toad. Uh, gonna go ahead and Stammer Phase, use the Toad to summon out a copy of Dupe. And then from here, gonna go to Battle Phase, gonna attack into the Dupe with Dante. And on Declaration, they're going to use the Canadia to book it. And then they're going to chain a Paleo. And the Anomal Karis is going to hit Phantasme. So they actually missed there. Uh, but they're going to pass here. And this this definitely should just be the end of the game, right? Uh, they're going to go and draw Morella for turn. And, oh, they just actually uh, concede. So Paleozoic actually winning this match 2-0. to zero. Oh, they're actually going here. So they're going to go Cavalry or Sky Cavalry. So that's a way to, I guess, uh, prevent the Dante from hitting the grave. Seer would be... So, yeah, that way you can just toad negate the Seer. Uh, yeah, that works. Oh, and then can flip up the backjack and then go for Link Freebo. Let's see what was banished there. Super Poly. Ooh, we see Super Poly here. And Dark Sacrifice as well. Which makes sense with the, the backjack. Yeah, so this was going to be game for sure. But yeah, very fascinating for sure that uh, Paleo won that one 2-0. to zero. Did not expect that, but those are some uh, pretty good games there for sure. Uh, but that's going to be for the video. Uh, just before we wrap things up, want to shout out my patrons as usual. So thank you so much for supporting the channel. The one for inconsistent content is made, po is made possible <laughs> thanks to you guys. And if you do want to help support the Patreon as well, uh, feel free to check it out in the description box below. But that's going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like as well as any thoughts or feedback in the comments. Subscribe for more and to review good content. If you want to, you can follow all or all my social media platforms or support me with your links in the description box below as usual. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.